In this video, I would like to talk about the Chinese dramas I've given up so far in 2020. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where Zheng Kiang good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. Last year, I did a video about the dramas I've given up in 2019, and this year, just because of the sheer amount of dramas that have come out so far and also the amount that I have looked at, I thought if I do it at the end of the year, that video can potentially go to like what an hour long so we're gonna cut this ear into sections this video we're gonna look at the first third of 2020 and the chinese dramas that i've seen and also i've given up on so these do not include the dramas that i kind of have seen but really didn't go through every second such as skating to love Bing Tang Dun Li, or under the power Jing Yi Zhi Xia. both dramas are the type of dramas that i've kind of clicked on every episode or speed through it so i still know roughly what the whole drama is about i just didn't sit through every second today the dramas on my list are the dramas i started watching into certain numbers of episodes and didn't go back for all kinds of reasons. As I always emphasize on this channel, this is a subjective channel from Avenue X. All drama review opinions are my personal opinions. I'm not attempting to be any objective reference system for anyone to use. Although, if you've watched enough of my videos, you kind of know what type of dramas I like or how I look at dramas, and then you can compare that to your own scale and preferences and get a rough picture about what a new drama might appear to you. I think that's like the most reasonable way of looking at my channel. The ones that I've given up on might be your favorites. Please don't feel offended. The dramas on my list that I've given up are not listed in any particular order. First one, Pillow Book. Eternal Love of Dreams, is that the official title? It's very hard to remember that English title because it doesn't make logical sense. It is the second coming of the Ten Miles of Peach Blossoms franchise and focuses on Donghua and Feng Jiu's story. After I made my first impression video, I still watched a couple of episodes and then gave up. Especially when it got to the part where Feng Jiu ended up in the dream that she becomes Alan Re. I feel I'm wasting my time looking at a world and stories of characters that I don't care about. All those people that show up in the dream of Alan Re are like, I don't know where they come from. I have no idea about their previous stories and they're not interesting. They spend so much time focusing on that story that I, I'm like, okay, whatever. And then there's a big point I think a lot of people talked about Pillow Book is it just looks so tacky. It looks like such a cheap production from the looks, from the styling, from the camera lighting, costume sets, the color palette, and like everything looks so much less expensive than Ten Miles of Peach Blossoms or Love and Destiny. Light just changed. So sorry about a sudden <laughs> change of exposure. A couple friends who do reviews uh, really love Donghua Di Jun. And if you're one of those people, totally legit. The second drama I gave up is one of the drama that I talk about in my first impression is like I'm totally not impressed by it which is Love Lost to Mind. I didn't continue watching that drama and that's kind of all I want to say. I maintain my same opinion as I did in my first impression. Among all the period dramas that I just rushed out during the first couple of months this year in China, it is one of those that totally didn't leave an impression on me. So if you're curious about my opinion about a particular drama, you can check out the first impression video I made. The third drama I gave up on, I feel like a little bit sorry about is I'll find you a better home. When I did my first impression, I said it's not a bad drama. It has something that I'm not happy with, but I'll continue watching it. I think I continued watching another about 20 episodes until probably a fourth or fifth from the ending, I like totally gave up. I just didn't continue, didn't even bother to check back on what happened to the leads. Because this drama, as it progresses, it becomes more and more focused again on the stuff that's not related to selling houses. It becomes a focus on the male leads, personal family, whatever, relationship drama, and the female leads, family drama. She's a very Fan Shengmei character um, in to joy like almost exactly same type who, who has just a terrible mother terrible brother terrible family that just continuously give her trouble and it kind of still needs the male lead to uh, save her from it given that during the airing of this drama the real world is also kind of 
in a very shitty situation. I was just like, do not want to see that much negative energy. And I quit the drama and um, never thought about going back to it. I do have to praise all the actors in this drama. They did a brilliant job acting the roles. It's just the story that got me tired of it. Then let's move on to the drama Reborn. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. After I did my first impression, I watched a couple more episodes and it started to go to the point of being absolutely ridiculous. It is called the sister drama of day and night. But oh my god, it's nowhere near what day and night is. And no matter how good the lead actors or supporting actors are, like you cannot do magic when, when, when the script is like, what the heck is going on? I would not recommend you to watch this drama. I don't think it's worth wasting your life on it. It certainly is nothing like day and night and if you don't know happen to know um the second season of day and night may never happen now because the uh, script writers are a pair like they were a couple boyfriend and girlfriend and they broke up they're not working together anymore unless they get other people to write it i don't know then uh i gave up on sleuth of ming dynasty because in comparison to other very chemistry heavy and working really well leading characters relationship drama that was going on at the same time this one just drops the ball Wang Zhi is really good Liu Yaoyuan's performance of Wang Zhi is the only thing that I think would make it worth watching but even that couldn't sustain me through this drama it really failed at creating a very important central couple which is in the original book which is also what people went in this drama for Sui Zhou and Tang Fan's central core relationship I know if it's a BL story adapted in today's China it has to go to the greatest friendship kind of area instead of you know but still you can do a lot with that you can make the relationship of the two people convincing enough interesting enough engaging enough none of that happened for me I want to look at the male third. That's all I want to watch. Everyone else is like so boring. And like I said in my first impression video, the dubbing is really a huge problem for me in this drama. When they choose to dub one lead with perfect Mandarin and the other leave it with the original, very strong Taiwan accent, Chinese. It might be okay for all international audiences who do not speak the language. You can detect the very odd difference. But if you do speak the language, I don't think many people can sit very comfortably through it because it's just weird. Every time Sui Zhou speaks, he's out of place. This drama also added unnecessary female roles that really doesn't go anywhere. It added unnecessary emphasis on food, which is totally different from the original book's Tang Fan role, but also like so many close-up shots. What are you trying to do? Once Upon a Bite? Documentary about how good food is? And how does that fit into the entire mystery case solving any of that. It is so added on with no purpose apart from looking good and um, filling time. I totally gave up on the Sleuth of Ming Dynasty and I have no plan to go back to it. And then, unfortunately, Serenade of Peaceful Joy. I really prefer the uh, original title, but even for the original title, this drama doesn't quite fit. I gave up around mid 20 episodes, but in China, because it's still one of those hotly on air dramas, so every day when new episodes get updated, small clips of the highlight of that drama goes on social media. So I still see it every day, like clips of what happens today, what happens tomorrow. And as it goes on, it just gets you more and more agitated, annoyed, and angry because the script is written so poorly the characters are like all over the place it's so inconsistent for all the main lead characters there are a lot of stuff that doesn't respect actual history and doesn't make sense for example how the princess is treated by her married family her husband and husband's mother that is just like baffled me if you don't happen to know Song Dynasty has a really weird rule in order to protect princesses high status as the ruler because princess to her husband is still a sovereign. So to avoid princess being one generation level lower than her married family's parenting law, what Song Dynasty imperial family decided to do was to elevate a princess and her husband once she gets married, one generation level up. So they are equal in the family, the uh, married family's family tree to the men's parents. 
so that the princess will never need to treat the parents as her upper generation, curtsy or pay respect or do whatever. Like she doesn't need to do any of that because they're the same level. So this weird practice that's actually against Confucius, so teaching about the hierarchy of society happened only in Song Dynasty because they are that hardcore in terms of announcing the imperial rule is higher above little, above everything. And as you can see in the drama, how she got treated by her mother-in-law, it's just a joke. Basically, this drama's reputation has totally crumbled in China among every every drama reviewers I've come across. Everyone was like, what the heck happened to the plot? Zhong Wu Yangguang, Daylight Production, you're on the brink of uh, becoming <laughs> a joke and losing all the good karmas you've built up in the past five years. Please take care of the quality of your production and don't put Zhang Kaizhou the director and Zhu Zhu the scriptwriter together for a period drama. It is a disaster. Such a waste of Jiang Shuying, of Wang Kai, of Ren Ming, of Bian Cheng, of Ye Zuxing. I mean, good actors did a really good job. Like, I have no complaint about all the actors and actresses in this drama. I'm just looking at the script and the direction and everything. It's like, what kind of shit is that? A waste of like 70 episodes worth of time of anyone who's looking at it. Maybe I sound very, very unforgiving, but um, I had high hopes, you know? And then the last one, unfortunately, is hunting. So sorry, Wang Kai. I've been looking forward to your work for so long and I was so happy that there are two drums coming out at the same time, led by you, and I have no complaining about what you do. It's just the story didn't work on me. For hunting, it happened very similarly as longest day in Chang'an, Chang'an Shi Shichen, to me, which is I tried to get into the drama over eight times on different occasions. And I can only get to about episode six and seven and I get stuck there and I have no ability to continue watching it. While it was ongoing, a lot of people also keep posting clips on it and then commenting on particular characters, acting of particular actors or the plot. I do see actually quite a lot of positive reviews about certain plots or certain characters in this drama. So I was like, yeah, okay, maybe uh, I should give it a second try or third try or whatever because so many people are saying, oh, this part of the plot is interesting, whatever. But I tried like at least eight times and I just like couldn't sit through it. I couldn't build up any interest in any of the main characters, whether they're the good people, the bad people, the antagonist, the protagonist, the good policeman, or the bad businessman, or the uh, opportunist trader. Like there are a lot of characters in it, but I just couldn't get into any of them. I am constantly annoyed by the uh, presence of BGM which is a lot in this drama. It just happens at all places which do not really need it. Also, I get constantly annoyed by shaky cam. I think ever since Bourne's identity film, success, everybody likes shaky cam now. But like, if you use it for particular type of story and for particular scene, when it makes sense, it helps to give you that realistic in place and uh, very agitated feeling. But this drama just uses shaky cam all the time. And if it's handheld, it's fine. But handheld, you also can make it more stable handheld instead of like... The drama is constantly da -da 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 shaking all the time. I get like car sickness <laughs> after watching it for a while. They also don't light it well. Hunting just doesn't do lighting well. I know they're probably going for the realistic look. I mean, if you're in an average office room in a police station, it doesn't have perfect lighting. Uh, if you're not facing the right angle, you probably look really dark. Yeah, I understand that, but you're doing a drama. This is a professional drama that um, is a production. Can you just find a good balance point between dramatic needs and reality? You're not filming a documentary. You are filming a, a dramatic story that's made up. If there is an industry standard of how to do good lighting, if there are good lights extremely expensive that you can buy their filters, their reflectors, there are all kinds of stuff, gadgets, flag, whatever that exists in the industry. They exist for a reason. Use them. Why do you have to make your leads look so damn dark and terribly unflattering? And as for the story's plot, like I said, I've heard from people like certain episodes and certain later plots are quite exciting, but I couldn't sit through the part that I can't sit through in order to get there. And I'm like, I can't do that. 
so I gave up on hunting too. I really do feel very sorry that um, it turned out this way. As I was uh, counting all the dramas I've seen so far and what I've given up on and why I've realized I've seen so many dramas. So far in 2020, I think much, much higher intensity than what I did in 2019. If it continues to go like this, by the end of this year, I may have like broken a personal record of uh, most dramas watched in a year. And I don't know by then whether I would still be saying Maybe I'll totally go. Let me know if any of you watching my video have actually seen that many dramas this year. Like look at all the videos I've made so far from January to now. And all the dramas I've talked about are the dramas I've watched or like I dropped, but if I didn't drop them, then I've watched the whole thing. Count the numbers, see how many and see if you've actually done the same thing. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only person on planet Earth huh, who has done that. And there are also a couple of dramas I, I still haven't made videos about that I have actually already watched. Yeah, those I've made videos about are not the only dramas that, um, that I've, I've seen. I have been running this channel for over three years. Occasionally I do question, what has it done for me or done to me? It's 2020, right? Anything can happen. It already has proven that um, everything that you imagine wouldn't happen, could happen, and it will happen so easily that um, it constantly stretches your acceptance of what existence is. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, stay healthy, live long, and happy drama watching.